Hi, my name is Zach and I run the Shooting Cars YouTube channel. I've reviewed over 1,100 cars here on the channel, but sometimes finding cars can be a little bit difficult. That is where press cars come in. You might have heard me using the term press cars in a couple of videos recently, as I have recently gotten into the press car ecosystem. So if you are wondering what that might mean, this is the video for you. Down below there are chapter markers if you'd like to skip around or if you had any certain or specific questions about press cars, or if you just wanted a little bit of insight on what this video might be. So without any further ado, let's talk about press cars. This is a press car. Well, one of the many press cars that you'll see in this video. A press car is a vehicle, a car that is given out to journalists or media outlets to help publicize and review the vehicle. It's a way to get the cars into journalists' hands. You can often identify a press car because they will be on manufacturer plates. Depending on the state in which the headquarters of the company is in, you'll see that state's plate on the back, usually with a shorter license plate number than what you would normally find. So where do press cars come from? Well, unfortunately, it's not when a mommy press car and a daddy press car love each other very much. It's actually from the manufacturers themselves, but there's a middleman in that process. There's something called a press car fleet management company, and they go by many different names, that handle and relegate out the cars to journalists. All right, so to better visualize this, I have put some matchbox, some pieces of paper, and have used a Sharpie on my kitchen counter to visualize how the press car system works. So obviously we start off up here and the manufacturers build the car. They are responsible for the specs of the car. So Jeep would choose lime green, Gladiator, Ford would choose silver, Ford Lightning, Fiat would choose blue, Fiat 500, and they would choose every single option on the car. Once they do that, they deliver them to the press car fleet management company. Now this is going to vary depending on where you live. It's going to vary depending on manufacturers. Certain manufacturers only work with certain fleet car management companies. So in the real world, Fiat and Jeep actually use one and then Ford actually uses a different fleet management. But you know, for the reasons of this video, let's just say they all use one. It is then this company's job to distribute the vehicles out to the different media outlets. That can consist of videographers like myself, magazines, journalists, whatever it might be. If you've seen a car on the cover of Car and Driver, it came from a press car fleet management company. Then when the journalist, magazine, or videographer is done with the car, they send them back to the management company, and then they go off to other outlets. So the same press cars get used across the board. I've reviewed cars that many other journalists have driven. And so when they go back to the press car fleet management company, they get cleaned, they get detailed, made to look pretty, and then sent back out. The cars will make the rotation until either the new model year, new vehicle comes out, or something like that, where they're sent back to the management company. And so sometimes in one region, there might not be just three media outlets. There might be 10. 15, 20, 30, over 100. And so these cars will make many, many loops around different media outlets during their lifespan. After these cars are used up by journalists, there's a couple of things that might happen to them. A lot of them are sent out to public auctions and either purchased by individuals or dealers to resell on their lots. Some of the cars are taken back by the manufacturer and completely dismantled to be studied about what things wore over that year. Another outcome, unfortunately, like I predicted, was the fact that some of them do get crushed because they are pre-production vehicles, and pre-production vehicles cannot be sold legally to private parties. Since they don't technically have a proper VIN number, unfortunately, they can't be sold to someone like you or I, so they have to legally be crushed. However, that is very rare. Most of the cars end up getting sent off to auction or get pulled back to the manufacturer, dismantled to learn more about the chassis that they've built. 
So how did I get involved with press cars? How did I start receiving them? It's probably my most asked question. Well, contrary to popular belief, it's not because of my stunning good looks and chiseled abs. It's actually kind of a long process. And I want to preface this real quick by saying, this is how I got involved with press cars. It might be different for other people. If you're a big name, a big celeb, they'll probably reach out to you personally, but that wasn't the case for me. The first thing I did was join an automotive media Media Association, specifically the Midwestern Automotive Media Association, known as MAMA. And if you'd like more info on that, you can either DM me on Instagram or send me an email with the information up on the screen. It's kind of a long process and it doesn't apply for everyone. So I joined MAMA and they have close relationships with a couple of different fleet management companies. And that's how I got in. I started talking to a couple of the people that run those fleet management companies. And what they do is they act as the middleman as we just discussed. But what they also do is they shop me around to all the big manufacturers. So the fleet management company actually emailed Toyota and they said, hey, we have this new hotshot young kid outside of Chicago who would like press cars and I sent them a couple of different examples of my work and I have to get accepted by each of the manufacturers. So I had to get accepted by Toyota and Lexus. I had to be accepted by Volvo separately. I had to be accepted by Mazda separately. I had to be accepted by Hyundai separately. And so the list will ever go on. As of right now, I just recently got accepted by Honda and Acura, but there's so many more makes and models on the table. Sometimes I don't meet the criteria that a certain company is looking for. They want someone higher profile to get the vehicles. They want someone who specifies or works specifically with new cars. I work with new and old, and that might not be an image that they want to produce. So it all depends. I get asked a lot like, oh, do you have to have a certain amount of views or a certain amount of subscribers or anything like that? And the answer is no. There are people with fewer subscribers than me that get press cars. There's people with way more subscribers than me that get press cars. What they want to see is consistent work, good work, and of course, enough views to justify sending someone a car. So the biggest thing I can tell you is to A, join a media association wherever you live in the world, and B, is to just have have a good catalog of work that you can show to someone. When I started this process, I had already reviewed over 900 cars. So I had a big backlog that I could show these companies and say, hey, I've driven your product before. I've liked your products before. This is what I do. Now, I'm not saying you have to have 900 cars <laughs> to apply, but it's something to keep in mind. One more thing before we move on to some paperwork and logistics stuff is that 25 years old is a good age to be. There's a lot of car makers out there whose insurance won't cover anyone under the age of 25. So if you're 24 and a half and you're thinking about getting into this line of work, I might wait the six months, but don't be lazy and spend those six months making content to show the big manufacturers. So once a manufacturer makes the absurd decision to give me a car like this or any other automobile, there's a couple of things that have to happen. First of all is the schedule. Like I mentioned with the manufacturer and press car fleet manager, I might have this car this week, but then another journalist or another media outlet is gonna have it next week. And someone had this car before me. So the middleman, the fleet manager company, figures out a schedule and I usually get an email saying, hey, you'll get this car this time, this car this time, and this car this time. I get them about four or five week chunks so I know what I'll have for the month. Now, of course, things do come up, things change. Sometimes the manufacturer says, hey, we need that car back to do a commercial. Hey, we need a car back to do this, that, or the other. So it is somewhat up in the air at times. And I do have a little bit of say in what vehicles I'll get. I'm still the low man on the totem pole. I've only been doing this for about two or three months at this point. So I don't really have the authority to be like, I need this this week and this this week. I've emailed them suggestions. I've emailed them maybe some cars that I'm looking for. If I could maybe get on a list, that sort of thing. But I don't really have a major say in what vehicles I get put into. That being said, when I am selected for a vehicle, a schedule is set. A couple nights before, I'll get something called a DocuSign. That is a written agreement of everything that I can and cannot do with the car. What I'm showing on screen now is a fake one that I made up because I don't want to put any certain manufacturer on blast or whatever, but there are certain stipulations. Insurance for these vehicles is carried completely by the manufacturer. So this car right here is insured by Lexus. That's what the big signature is. Now there are some mileage limits 
that I also sign for. Like some manufacturers only allow 500 miles. Some have allowed up to 750 miles. Now I can take that further if I directly contact them and say, hey, I want to do this road trip and they have to approve anything above that mileage. But usually 500 to 700 miles is my allotted amount per car. I have yet to hit the 500 mile cap in any car. The most I've driven in a press car in one week was 470 miles. So that's not really an issue. So now I've gotten the okay from the car brand. I have signed all of the necessary paperwork. How do I physically receive the press cars? Well, they get dropped off at my house and the old press car gets taken away. How they normally schedule it is back to back to back to back to back to back to back. Meaning I'm pretty much never without a press car. Unless I go out of town, I'll say, hey guys, I'm gonna be gone this week. Then they'll pick it up and not give me a replacement. They pull up in the new car. We exchange some words, maybe talk about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They get into the old car and take it away. Now, while I have the car, there are a couple of interesting things. First of all, a lot of people talk to me and ask me about fuel. These cars come when they get dropped off with a full tank of gas. If I use more than the full tank of gas, that's on me. I have to fill it up using my own money. But with this particular Honda Accord, it gets 530 miles to a tank, and yet that's actually more than my allotted miles. I won't have to fill it up and I'll return this car with a little bit of fuel left. That means I don't have to pay for fuel. So as long as I don't have to fill it up while I have it, I don't have to return it with a full tank or anything like that. I touched on it earlier, but insurance is all ran through the individual manufacturers. This car is insured fully by Honda. And so if I do crash it, wreck it, scratch it, bip it, boop it, bop it, I deal with them. And if I total it, I walk away. Now, Honda probably won't send me another car if it's my fault, but it's all carried through the manufacturer. At the end of all of this, what do I have to do? Do I have to make a video? And the answer is actually no. They hope that I make a video. They hope that I write an article. They hope that I talk about it on a podcast, but I actually don't sign anywhere saying that I have to. Now, I love making videos and I'll make a video of every press car I have because I love it, but I don't actually have to in writing. There's also people that get press cars that are analytics specialists and they just have to know what's hip and current and happening. There's some people that work for consulting agencies, the people that tell Honda, hey, you should have heated seats in here. Hey, you should have this, you should have that. Honda would hire someone to tell them what the people want. Those people get press cars as well. And they don't have to write about it. They don't have to post about it. They just have to experience it and talk about it with their colleagues. So there is no written requirement for me to make this video or any review, but I want to, and I like to, and I like to show my appreciation for Honda going out of their way and giving me a car or any of the other cars you've seen so far in this video. So that's about it for the basics of press cars. Just to run through it real quick, a press car is a vehicle given out to journalists or people in the industry to sample and test on their own. Press cars are managed by a fleet management company who is responsible for sending them out to the journalists and industry people, as well as detailing them. I got accepted by each of the manufacturers in order to get press cars. I have to sign a release as well as for insurance. I have to sign a bunch of paperwork. And then when I have it, I don't have to pay for gas unless I have to fill it up. And they hope that I make a good video about it. If you have any more pressing questions, please leave it in the comment section down below. These were just sort of the major points, but I will be monitoring the comments of this video for the next couple days after it comes out to see if you have anything specific in mind. If I don't reply or if you have a very, very specific question, you can contact me with the information up on the screen. My email is pradlereviews at gmail.com and my Instagram, which I check more, is shooting underscore cars. I hope this video was informative. I really, really hate automotive gatekeeping. If you're curious about press cars or anything talked about, I hope that this helped. I hope this answered a few questions. And one more thing, press cars are a huge privilege. They didn't have to do this. Lexus didn't have to accept me. I'm still a little YouTuber. And so press cars should never go unappreciated. It's a really, really cool thing. I'm at a point in my career where I'm able to get them and that is not lost on me. But like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any more questions, please put it in the comments below. Take care, guys. Thank you.